All right, well, let's move along to the Bears' backfield. We'll get off Burton for a second, take it to what this backfield did. Uh, looking at the stat line, Jordan Howard, five for five catches. Right, watching the game, you saw him snag plenty of hands he catches. It's crazy. Five balls caught in your face. Five <laughs> five balls thrown, five balls caught. Most of them hands he catches. It's, How, like, he, it's like he has two hands. There's no way he did that, though. It's crazy. Probably like it didn't even happen. He uh, can't even catch a cold. He could not. <laughs> Catch it cold. It was so funny. Stop that this. The the announcers were like, he's really using his hands out there. It's like, well, he's not going to catch it with his teeth. He might not be running routes from the slot, but he can catch balls. Right. And he did have a high drop rate last year, one of the worst in the in the league. Some of those weren't his fault. He came out here. He made plenty of hands. He catches while, whilst moving in a right. lot of them <laughs> and putting a move on somebody else. So I was super excited to see that. I just like shoving that in people's faces. Like sure. a lot of these running backs can catch if they just give them a little bit of practice throwing it to them. They'll be all right. Well, that's what Jordan Howard did. Right. In the offseason, he said, I'm going to catch passes every day after practice because I, I want a chance to catch these passes. I don't want to come off the field. And I want a chance to do this. I, I don't want it just to be the Tariq Cohen show when it comes to running backs catching balls around here in third downs. And he put the work in, and it worked out week one. So highlight. Speaking of Tariq Cohen. Well, no. Hi, first, okay. uh, highlighting Jordan Howard's hands and then going to what he does and how he does it. I thought he was. <laughs> Let him do what he does because when I he does he it, was, he's doing it. Fantastic in the run game. He looked as advertised out there. It's nice to see him. We mentioned, well, I think the week before this uh, season started, it's nice to see him finally getting some respect. And I thought in this situation where they were actually having a positive game script, where everyone wasn't worried about Jordan Howard running straight at them, where they had to worry about a little bit of something else, like Jordan Howard looked awesome. There was plenty of runs where he looked like a pretty elite NFL running back. Does he have the best speed? No. Does he have the best anything? No, not really. But he gets the job done and he does it week in, week out. And you can give him a good offense like we've been saying, like this offense is figured to be where you don't know where it's coming from and it's not just he, nine guys in the box and pounding might, with Jordan Howard. He's top tier vision. No doubt about it. And as far as, yeah, he's not the fastest, he's not the shiftiest, but he is very efficient with his movements for a big man. And what I... You got, like you said, now you for the first time in two years, Jordan Howard is freed up from nine men in the box, and everybody knowing they're going to run it. He gets only 15 carries, goes for 82 yards, average five and a half. So there's your average, everybody. And five for five on catches. Right, exactly. And what I really liked about it is even when the game got tight at the end, and then really in the situations where the Packers really felt like they were about to run it, Jordan Howard rips off two 10 yard yeah. runs in a row and he's like I feel at home now because that, the defense was all looking at me and I did it anyway like right. he, he really does the best work under pressure when the defense wants to basically knows Jordan Howard's about to get the ball so there's a lot of good if you got a if you got Jordan Howard stock right now you're not looking at it with 82 yards and no rushing touchdowns you're looking at it like he's got 82 yards five more catches and another seven PPR points on top of my rushing total and no touchdowns yet, and he just right. got me 15. Sure. So, that you know, any, any given Sunday, he rumbles into the end zone twice, and you got a 25, 28-point game on your hands. He might not catch five every week, but now he's just done it, and he's not that, oh, he only got me 82 yards. That's 8.2 points. Right. That's what everybody was worried about. Yeah, it's exactly. okay. We got two yards in a cloud of dust for 80 yards, and I can't even start him because it's only eight points. Right. That's there you go. He got There's you 15 to without be had. A, 15 PPR points without a touchdown. And he looked damn good catching him. Yeah, he did. All right. So let's move on to the other guy in this backfield. There's obviously really no buying low or anything with Jordan Howard. If you wanted to sell high because you're a Jordan Howard hater, I guess go ahead. Probably didn't already have him on your team. If right. That was the case. So Tariq Cohen had a can't be any good. Had a marginal game at best here. Average five yards a carry. Five point five. Um. Let's see how the room feels about Tyreek Cohen. You you guys buying, selling, overreacting, underreacting. What do you what do you like with with Cohen here? Well, I mean, you didn't see anything out of him in the preseason. You literally you didn't see hardly anything. And like we've already talked about that on the Bears in general, they didn't show you a ton at all. They didn't. Allen Robinson didn't play a single snap. So they're just getting going here. Right. And. To see him, you know, I mean, he caught three or four balls and caught, had five carries. I don't know that he's going to get too many more touches than that. But Aaron Rodgers came storming back in this game, and I think that, I think that it was encouraging. I mean, obviously, you want to see more from him, but 
he's he's a, well, yeah. a, a shoestring tackle away from busting big playoff. They were they were in a game script. They were in a situation where it doesn't lend to what Cohen is doing for this team. They're in a situation where they're trying to hold this lead and let's keep Jordan Howard on the field and let's not. We don't need to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with Cohen right now. Right, but to build that lead, Cohen was an integral right. part in doing right. it. Right. Yeah. He he was out there. They were holding on for dear life. And that at the very yeah right, for it, more for the uh, whole second half, right? Well, exactly. It, you, it really wasn't going to go good for Cohen either way. Once they were up twenty something to nothing, you know what I mean? Or seven, mm-hmm. that first seven, that first half up seventeen zero is absolutely remarkable. The Bears are going crazy, you know. It was, but let's not lose the fact that Tariq Cohen's, I don't want to call it gimmicky stuff, but they it, it, you can't. That's the speed and the and the breakaway ability that he has stretching the defense in addition to everything else that the Bears have going on because that's what we were talking about in the offseason. That's what we meant by Nagy and the system and they paid first first day of free agency they paid Burton. They bring in Allen Robinson. They trade up and get Anthony Miller. Like that's this is what you were looking for X's and O's wise and it was just like you said Trubisky wasn't ready. Maybe the whole team wasn't ready. They had the big Khalil Mack uplift they got you know the defensive touchdowns to get going they 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 got all that going but were they ready this is a super you this a young team a young unit like were they ready to be up big early on the packers on the road yeah they weren't ready for that but that's is you know Tariq cohen moving forward you have to like what you saw but yeah only five carries and only four targets caught three of them the usage wasn't crazy but the second half of the game didn't lend to it him at all Right, and the, and the usage wasn't crazy, and so the bottom line is, for me, is like I'd be going out and trying to find someone who wasn't happy with Tariq Cohen, and I'd be more than willing to give up something to try and get him on my team. Like, this is, I feel like it's a solid buy-low opportunity because you yeah. you hear these Tariq uh, Hill comparisons, and you expect all this from this Bears offense, and everybody loves Trubisky, and it didn't work out for him in the stat sheet per se. It didn't quite get you 10 points. I'd be down to go and, uh, and try and put out some feelers for yeah i'm definitely looking to send out feelers for cohen as well i i I think there was already some low the stock was dropping a little bit from the preseason and lack of usage i don't know how much he showed you in this game at least the cohen owner who may or may not be kind of indifferent on him and they picked him because maybe they thought he was the value in the round or whatever um maybe isn't super excited about the bears going forward or cohen's role going forward so i would definitely be um throwing some stuff out there for him well that's that's the part of the question here is i would really be interested if what to see what kind of work maybe jay wayne puts in this week as his fillers what it what it looks like because i can see uh, casey and i have treat cohen on one team it is a short bench league and when you start thinking about all these weapons and the potential startability, you might be able to, like Casey gets on me a lot of times about being like, remember that even in the season, you are playing a week-to-week game, but when you're in Dynasty, it's you like a player for his talent and his ability. And in this scheme, and the X's and O's, and the the, the correlation between Tariq Cohen and the potential of, for the Tyreek Hill usage is there. Do we get the same player? Obviously, it's, Tariq Cohen would have to go a long way to become what Tyreek Hill, God status he is right now. I get that. But yet, this I can see where the owner of Tariq Cohen is waffling because I'm a little bit indifferent on myself about his potential startability in the next week or three going forward. And just if until like this Bears team has a ways to go to be rocking and rolling like the you know Chiefs were last year with a veteran you know master game planner and and not turnover in alex smith and then you got the, the next coming of brett right. Favre going in this year in my home so if while this team builds up to speed maybe even in the next week or two you might have this process of Tariq cohen's coming you know it is and he, maybe his startability isn't that great in the next week or three, exactly but this is but dynasty it, but that we're talking about right, here exactly. and i have no remorse throwing out a second round pick to try and go get okay him there you, you go certainly sure. couldn't get that f- you could probably couldn't get him for that pre preseason. That's what me and Big Co got him for, and then he was more valuable all off season. And then near the end of the off season, it started going back down. Exactly. Um, so that's around what we were paying for him during all the hype. And now I feel like the hype is probably even further down because you weren't nobody was sure what was going to happen. And then he came out here, and it wasn't great. 
I mean, the short bench. But it was great on that first drive. Right. And you can see what he can do. Right. And in the short bench league, I mean, I can understand, you know, you needed to, you need to have a bench of startable guys and I can understand that. But the Bears are, again, are also in the preseason. We're seeing this with a lot of teams. A lot of teams. They didn't even, week three, they didn't even start, pull their guys out there. Like, this is a preseason. And I think on the late night game, uh, Mar, uh, Booger McFarlane uh, was was talking about how a lot of teams are okay with saying, all right, well, we're just going to get out of the preseason healthy, healthy yeah. and we're going to come in here. If maybe it costs us a game or two through September to get acclimated and get our offense rolling. You saw it with the Rams a little bit, especially in that first half of getting things going and getting in the flow of things and everybody busting uh, yeah. the rust off. Exactly. Um, so, you know, Cohen didn't play a whole lot in the preseason and neither did Trubisky and neither did a lot of these pieces on the offense. So we're kind of still in the preseason with a lot of these teams and their offense. So just, you know, don't get super discouraged with any of these players.